when you harvest your carrots, it's important to go ahead and take that top off because it will take the moisture out of the carrot. I appreciate you being here and I'm going to go over with you 12 steps in planting carrots successfully. Let's get started. Tip number one is the date. Look at your calendar and mark it on the date you plan to plant your carrot seeds. Carrots are a cool weather crop. In a lot of planting zones, they plant their carrots spring and summer. But here in Florida, it's just the opposite. We plant anywhere from October to March. Tip number two of 12 is to pick out your carrot seeds. And to help with that decision, let's consider our climates and also our soil types. Let's take a look at five different types of carrots according to their shapes. The five different types of carrots according to their shape size are Imperator, Nantes, Danvers, Chantenay, and Round. Within these five different types of carrots, there are many different types of varieties to choose from. The Imperator is a long carrot. It's tapered and it can get up to 10 inches in length. So whether you're growing these in five gallon buckets or a raised bed or in the soil, you need to have at least 10 inches of sandy, long, loose soil to grow these in. The next type is Nantes. This carrot here is pretty much the same diameter from end to end. It has a blunt tip. Now this carrot was named after the city from which it originated, Nantes, France. The S is silent. So over there, they pronounce this carrot Nantes. However, many people in the U.S. pronounce it Nantes. You'll get the best results with these nanty carrots if you have loose, well-draining garden soil. The Scarlet Nanties is the oldest and most well-known variety of this category. The Danvers are a medium-length carrot. They have rounded shoulders and a pointy end, and they can get up to be about six to seven inches long. And these can tolerate a little bit more heavier, shallower soils because of the way it's shaped. The Danvers 126 has been a time-tested favorite heirloom carrot that was introduced back in the late 1800s. The Chantenay carrots have a short cone shape, and because of the way these are shaped, they can really power through clay and rocky soils better than the other types of carrots can. But these are more bulky at the shoulders, and they are tapered to a blunt point. But these need to be harvested as soon as they size up or they have a tendency to become fibrous and woody if you leave them in the ground too long. The fifth category is the round carrot. Now these carrots have become very popular for home gardens because of their early season and simple growth habits. And because of their small root size, it can grow in heavy clay soils where other varieties may not survive. Also the round carrots can grow well in containers because of the small space it takes up. Tip three of 12 is to pick your location. Now carrots need about six to eight hours of direct sunlight a day. So pick an area where you get full sun or a very little partial shade. Tip number 412, decide ahead of time the best place for you to sell your carrot seeds. Will it be in a container, raised bed, five gallon bucket, or in the ground? Leave me a comment below, I would love to hear from you. I'm going to be sowing mine in the ground. Tip number five of 12, prepare your soil ahead of time. I have been working diligently in getting this soil ready because we cannot have any weeds, sticks, or rocks. All of that has got to go. Tip number six of 12, decide how you will be watering your carrots. Will it be by hand, overhead sprinklers, soaker hose, drip tape? We're gonna be utilizing the drip tape system. Tip number seven of 12 is check your soil's pH. Fortunately, carrots can tolerate soil pH anywhere from 5.8 to 7.0. I just checked mine and mine is 7.0. Tip number eight of 12 is to add your fertilizers and your amendments. Now carrots like more phosphorus and potassium and a little bit less nitrogen. If they get too much nitrogen, you'll have a lot more foliage at the top, but less root growth at the bottom. Our drip line is down. We've got two drip lines going down the row. My fertilizer is down, and now I'm going to be putting some peat moss mixed with some garden soil, a thin layer on top just to cover the fertilizer up. And remember that carrots can take anywhere from 5.8 to 7.0 pH, quite a bit of a wide range there, so we're good to go on that. Here is my bed where I'm going to be planting my carrot seeds. I have just put down a thin layer of 
peat moss mixed with soil. When working in the garden and planting, oftentimes it's a good idea to try different techniques and to experience with different things because one technique may work better for you over another. Today I'm going to be planting the carrot seeds a couple different ways and I'll be showing you that as I go along. But tip number nine of 12 is you can get the handle off of your broom or your mop. And I'm going to have three rows going down this one bed. And this is going to help me keep my rows somewhat straight. So just take your broom handle and just press it down in the soil. And that will leave a nice indentation and it will also give a little bit of a furrow to plant your seeds. And I'm going to do that on the other ones. Just press the broom handle down into the soil firmly. Okay, it's a good idea before you plant your carrot seeds to make sure that your soil is moistened down very well with water to make sure that the seeds get germinated. I'm going to be planting the Corota carrot seeds. One reason why I'm going to be planting these is because they are known to be a little bit more heat tolerant and being that we have a lot of heat here in Florida, hopefully this will work well for me. The Corota is a variety in the Chantinay variety types. One way I'm going to plant carrot seeds is, is with the cornstarch method. I purchased non-GMO cornstarch and the recipe is one cup of water, one tablespoon of cornstarch, and I doubled the recipe. So for wherever one cup of water, you put one tablespoon of cornstarch, put it in the pot on the stove on a medium low and let it come to a low simmer. As soon as it simmers and it thickens up, you take it off and to cool down. You do not want to boil it. It takes a little bit for it to cool down, but as soon as it cools down completely, then it's ready to be used. This is what it looks like when it's finished. I'm going to put one tablespoon of carrot seeds in this mixture. Now carrot seeds are supposed to be planted approximately a quarter inch deep and anywhere from two to three inches apart. I just took this staple and poked a hole in the corner. I was trying the bag method. I did not like it. I did not find it to be that user friendly. I did not like the way it was coming out. So I went to town to a beauty supply store and got an applicator bottle and put my mixture in here and just cut off the tip a little bit so it would come out smoothly. I'll show you how it comes out. So I have the cornstarch method down. I'm going to just lightly cover it with soil, ever so lightly. All right, that was the cornstarch method. Now I'm just going to plant some by hand. Come along with me. Okay, I'm just going to lightly cover it just a little bit, not much. All right, so my third method is with sand. I got two cups of my native soil. I'm here in Florida. My soil is very sandy. And I put one tablespoon of my carrot seeds and mixed it up very well. And I'm going to spread it down the row. Let's do that now. We have our carrot seeds planted. 
The first row was the cornstarch. A little more than halfway, I ran out, so I finished it up with just with bare seed, but I got it marked to let me know where I ran out. The second row is just sprinkling them along, and the third row is mixing them with sand. Now, the one that I mixed with sand, I'm not going to cover them up because it's already got soil in there. So what I'm going to do next is come along with some water and ever so lightly mist this down. Good. Now the last thing we're going to do is put down these planks. Uh, some people use just a wide board. These planks was for free. We got them to use and I'm just going to lay them down on top of the bed where we planted the carrot seeds. The purpose of this is to help keep the moisture in and to keep the carrot seeds from flying away or the birds come and eating them to give them a chance to have a better germination rate. Okay, so we got the planks down on top of the three rows and I'm going to bring you back as soon as they germinate. I left the boards on for five days and took them off. They were starting to sprout so they did well up underneath the boards, but you don't want to have the boards down very long, just the first few days, just to give them a start to get sprouted. And as you see, they have germinated quite well. I've got a few spotty spots here and there, but I'm going to take you down the row and let's take a look at it. You might remember the first row here, about halfway down, I did the cornstarch method. The second row, I just sowed the seeds with my hand and then the third row to my right um, I mixed sand with that and sowed it. As we're going along here this first row here was the cornstarch. This one here I sowed directly with the hand and this was the one I mixed with the sand. Our large clump here with the cornstarch And then some spots are spotty with the cornstarch. But even sewing by hand and with the sand, there are spots where there's large clumps. Now this area right here with the cornstarch is more like it. They're more evenly spaced out, but they're not consistent. So using the cornstarch method, some spots was okay. They were more evenly spaced, but other spots was clumped up and other spots was very spotty. I think all in all, I would just prefer to sew them by hand. They're going to have to be thinned out either way. This is the next step. We're going to have to get the carrots thinned out now at this point. It's time to thin the carrots. Now there are several approaches that we can take in thinning carrots. One is when we're sowing our seeds, trying to do different methods that as we sow the seeds, that we eliminate thinning as much as possible. As we know, carrot seeds are extremely small, so it's very difficult to try to get them at the proper spacing. Number two is after they get some growth on them, which mine are past due to be thin, that we can come out and we can pull them up about um, a thumb's width apart, about an inch apart. Now, some carrots are gonna need more spacing than that. Mine definitely will because I have the Chantinay Corota and they're broad at the top, so they're gonna need more than an inch. But the purpose in doing it an inch is that if you want to, that will allow you a little bit of time before the carrots grow to full maturity to come out and pull some carrots while they're still very young and they're edible at any stage. So that would be another reason to do it that way. So as you're pulling some immature carrots to snack on, that also will allow a little bit more space in between the carrots. Sometimes when the carrots get too tall, it's difficult to thin them without pulling up the adjacent carrot beside it. So in that case, if it's beyond pulling them up, then definitely using some pruning snips of some sort 
would be the way to go. That way you would thin them by just snipping off the ones that should not be there and it will not risk the other carrots close by and pulling them out of the ground as well. I'm thinning the carrots about an inch apart and then later I'm going to come back and thin them one more time. I'm using these pruning snips. I was coming along when it has a big cluster like this and just snip them. You can do that, but after doing it for a while, I decided that I would prefer just to pull them. When I come to a big cluster like this, I just take my time and close my snips and use it as a guide to help me just pull the carrots away from each other because these are cutting quite tall to thin, but they still need to be thinned. So I just come through here and I use this tip to help separate them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one right here up and just kind of hold these down. Look at that carrot there. But they need to be thin. So I'll just come through here and separate it and just gently pull them up. About an inch apart. Using the thumb and the forefinger helps a lot. And sometimes I'll use the point of this to kind of hold down the other one that's real close together to keep it from pulling it up. And that has helped. It's tedious work. It takes patience and time, but it's worth it because you'll have a better harvest of carrots in the long run. Look at that one. It's beautiful. As I look through here, I can see it's about a thumbs apart, about an inch apart. So that looks pretty good. This one here needs to come up. And then the ones you want to keep, if it kind of brings it up out of the soil a little bit, you just try to secure it back down into the soil. Okay. So we got this bunch taken care of. So what I'm going to do is, as time goes on and these gets a little bit bigger, I will come through here and then just um, pull a few more up and eat, eat them immaturely. And that way, that would be a good way of thinning them and having a little bit of harvest early as well. So that's pretty much how I thin out a large cluster of carrots. Now that looks good like that. I am back to give you an update on the carrots. It is this row right here. They have grown a lot. The carrots are not full grown yet, but I'm going to pull one to show you how it looks. Look at there. That is so exciting. These are the Corota carrots from the Chantanay category. That looks good. Okay, so it is time to harvest all of the carrots. It is very hot right now. It is in the month of April. And because of the heat, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest all the carrots. When you harvest your carrots, it's important to go ahead and take that top off because it will take the moisture out of the carrot. And the tops will be great to go into the compost pile.
Okay, I'm gonna harvest all these carrots and I'll bring you back when I get them harvest. I have lots to harvest. The row is long. If you have found value in this video, please take a moment to hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed yet, would you take a moment to smash that subscribe button to be a part of Kitchen Garden Farmhouse. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.